Welcome to the next Moto Champion Talk Show brought to you by Bridgestone. I'm Danielle Teal and it's officially December and officially the end of the 2015 AMA Pro Flat Track season. Flat Track had its grand finale at the Orleans Arena in Las Vegas in conjunction with the inaugural Super Prestigio of the Americas and Super Hooligan Race and it was a hit. Race fans, Harley fans, hooligans and racers were crawling all over the Orleans Hotel and Arena to support the inaugural event. And while the track size initially was a little suspect, it made for some really interesting racing and more than a few crashes. Where do I even begin? Friday night played host to the AMA Pro season finale where two-time Grand National Champ Jared Meese was set to defend his number one plate against the 42 of Brian Smith with just seven points between them. And while Briar Bauman went on to win the race, it was Meese who ultimately took the 2015 Grand National Championship again. On Saturday, there was an entertaining super hooligan race complete with some of the sexiest twins you've ever seen. Roland Sands and Indian Motorcycle put together an incredible lineup with the ultimate prize, the 2016 Indian Scout 60. After the twins muscled their way around the track, the winner was Tor Drake with Chris Wiggins and Roland Sands making the box as well. Congrats to all the participants. Super Prestigio was a mad dash of consecutive heat races and semis featuring some of the best motorcyclists in the world, including an all-star lineup with household names like Roger Hayden, Joe Roberts, Larry Pegram, Josh Hayes, Taylor Knapp, Aaron Colton, and even MotoGP's Tony E. These guys battled each other down to the final where they faced some of the best flat trackers in the world. While the All-Stars held their own in the end, it was the flat trackers who took home first through third. First place went to Mies, second to Baker, and third to Kenny Coolbeth. And that's why on this episode we have your now three-time Grand National Champion and first ever Super Prestigio winner, Jared Mies, on to talk about his season, his championship, his Super Prestigio win, and the upcoming Super Prestigio in Barcelona. But first, let's take a quick minute to thank some sponsors. JRI Shocks, the new era in racing shocks. For the Motorcycle Technology Center, visit bikers-lab.com. That's a Bridgestone Ecopia. I've never seen them out in the wild like this. It's young, too. They're very young. We're here studying the behavior of Bridgestone's fuel-efficient Ecopia tires in their natural setting. They can help you save up to $450 in gas over their lifetime. What? Holy smokes, that's a great deal. <sighs> great. You scared it away. Oh. Start going green and saving some green. Bridgestone. Your journey, our passion. Yellow. This little beauty here is top of the line. So you just pull like this to go left. And like so to go right. Where are the brakes? I just grab a hold of both and pull straight back. And the whoa is optional. You wouldn't buy a motorcycle without handlebars. No, thanks. And you shouldn't ride a motorcycle without GEICO insurance. Roadside assistance, 24-hour service, great rates. GEICO Motorcycle. See how much you could save. RST Racing Leathers, Gloves, and Boots, available at ridersdiscount.com. For the most comfortable ride on two wheels, choose Saddleman. Now we've got a special video for your viewing pleasure, a little Super Prestigio Barcelona teaser, put together by Thunder Multimedia and generously provided to us by Flat Track Live. Check it out.
We'll be right back after this commercial break with this week's guest, Jared Mees. For safe and structured track days, it's N2 Track Days. Check out their schedule at n2td.org. American Cargo, the next level in performance riding packs. TT Moto Gear, your source for premium products and service. All right, and we're back, and we watched him battle all the way to the final round where he was able to defend his number one plate. Let's get to know the 2015 Grand National Champion, Jared Bees. Jared, welcome to the show. Uh, thanks a lot for having me. How are you guys? Good, good. And we're glad to have you here for the first time. So we just watched the video, the teaser for Barcelona. I mean, are you ready to go out there and kind of throw down for the Americans and maybe give Marquez an elbow or something? Yeah, definitely. You know, I had a lot of uh, fun last year. It was my first time over to Spain. A little different. First time really out of the country other than like Canada. So um, didn't know what to expect. You know, the 17-inch tires were a little different from what we use over here. And just the culture, of course, is a little shocking. But uh, Going there the very first time and then knowing what to expect, I was able to, you know, prepare myself a little bit better, I feel, going into uh, this round. Well, did you even know what to expect when you went over there last year? Not really. You know, I, I hit up Brad quite a, quite a bit and uh, quizzed him as hard as I could with things. But, um, you know, never really ran on 17-inch tires until I went over there. Not that they were really a big shocker by no means, but just different in your mind. Um, but just, you know, the way they do things, the way the format was ran was a little different, very fast pace. But at the end of the day, it was a lot of fun. I actually enjoyed myself a lot over there and felt like I may, met some really cool people and um, got to battle with Marquez, who at the time was considered the best MotoGP guy in the paddock. So it was definitely a, a, a you know, highlight of my career and something I always look forward to going. I mean, I'm really looking forward to going back this year a lot more than I was last year. I mean, last year I was excited, didn't know what to expect. This year I know what to expect and I'm really excited to go. Well, after all the recent uh, happenings with Marquez, you think he's going to have it out for you out there? Trying to defend. <laughs> you never know. You know, maybe maybe Lorenzo might show up too and uh, might do a little blocking or something. I'm not sure. But, you know, it'll be fun. Marquez definitely stepped his game up from the first year to last year. And, um, you know, I think he knows what to expect and what to do. So I feel like he'll get better and better at the whole flat track thing. So hopefully Brad and I can go over there and uh, show show what the American flat track's about. Right. So represent for the Americans over there. We'll be watching for sure. So speaking of stepping it up again this year, you were number one last year, which you're number one again this year, but your game was very strong. Seven points ahead going into the final round. Give us a little breakdown of your season for you. It was a little bit of up and downs, but overall I'd say very strong considering uh, you ended up ultimately the champ again. Yeah, you know, we started off Daytona pretty strong, which uh, Daytona uh, in the past, I've I've started out weak, I've started off strong, but this year we started off pretty strong and really just stayed consistent like we did last year. Um, you know, I one of my biggest letdowns this year was X Games, of course, uh, last lap of the race, um, breaking, leading the thing and handing that gold medal over. Um, that's something that still has a pretty bitter taste in my mouth, that's for sure. But, um, you know, good thing it wasn't really for points or anything. And then uh, really the biggest hiccup this year for us was uh, in Charlotte, you know, with uh, one lap to go, running second to Brian Smith. I think we had like a 29-point lead going into Charlotte. We were looking real, real good. 
And then uh, we broke on the very last lap, running second contestant for the win, and Brian won. So he gained all those points back up. And then we went to Springfield, which we all know how strong Brian is on the miles. And we finished second to uh, Brian on the miles uh, at Springfield, and he won it and uh, tightened it up to almost one point. I mean, I went for 29 points in two races down to one point. And then uh, we had a, a race in um, Delaware, which I was able to beat Brian um, and gain six more points, which then uh, carried us to seven points in the lead going into Vegas and, uh, you know, did uh, got the job done and uh, ended the season with 23 points. But, you know, the biggest key this year for me was just consistency. You know, I, I feel like uh, when Brian won, we were second or third at worst and uh, except for Charlotte. <clears throat> and then when we, we won or we were on the podium, you know, Brian was, you know, fifth and sixth and seventh and some eleventh. So, um, you know, that's what really gained me a lot of points was uh, just basically the consistency through the whole year. So then let's talk about it. You've mentioned Brian quite a few times. Obviously, it was a battle back and forth between you two all the way to the end. You were able to capitalize on a mistake uh, made by him last year. He was able to capitalize on something that happened to you in X Games this year. But it went all the way down to the line, so much so that they put you guys in a face-off up on the podium at Vegas in opening ceremonies. Talk about that moment for you. You said, you know, it's just racing at the end of the day, but whether you're friends or not, at the end of the day, you want to win that championship. Talk about that moment. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, you know, Brian and I are, are really tight friends. Uh, you know, this year there was a, a lot of animosity with some things and, um, you know, with his team versus my team. But I think at the end of the day, it was just the competitiveness in both of us. Uh, you know, I mean, I had two years ago, I had him in my wedding, you know, as, as one of my guys. So uh, and I moved to Michigan years ago and he lives here in Michigan. So we spent a lot of time together riding, riding the ice, hanging out and uh, doing some traveling together back in the day. So the friendships there deep down inside, it's just, you know, with the championship and two guys wanting the same thing and working, you know, every day as hard as they can to try to achieve it, you know, just try to, you know, it gets in the way a little bit and, uh, <clears throat> which I think it would anyway, anywhere, but, um, you know, getting up there, it was, it was fun. It's a enjoyable moment for us. I think, you know, in 10, 15 years, you know, if we're retired, we'll look back on it and say how much fun we actually really had. And man, what about the good old days, you know? So, it was all good. And, you know, at the end of the day, I think he'll respect it just like I would. It's, you know, it comes down to, uh, I, I would like to say who wanted it more, but I know how bad he wanted it. But, um, you know, it was hard work on both of ours parts and, uh, I worked hard. He worked hard. It just, um, you know, I think some of the racetracks this year favored my style a little bit and, uh, we were just overall a lot more consistent. I mean, he definitely showed how, how strong he is on the miles and with the, with the wins. I mean, he got four more wins than I did, but, um, you know, those days where he finished 10ths and 11ths, we were, we were seconds and thirds, and that paid off at the end. So you talked about, um, you know, who worked harder. Obviously, everybody worked very hard going into this final event. You are considered the sh short track specialist at the end of the day, and uh, it looks like you were over Brian. Talk about some of the preparation, though. When I was interviewing you for the NBC Sports Network interview, you said something about how it wasn't just this last couple months leading up to the event. It really has been your whole career preparing you for this final event elaborate that on that a little bit yeah you know um i race a lot of the national stuff you know uh, unlike brian and, and cool beth and say like jake johnson um i race those little outdoor indoor uh concrete races ice races all through the season during the season the night before the grand nationals um just i enjoy racing a motorcycle and i like hitting those little non-national uh you know big purse money races um i think it keeps you sharp and um you know, just keeps you racing, really. I mean, you can go out there and practice all you want, but when you do race mode versus practice mode, you make a mistake racing, it usually costs you. You make a mistake practicing, you just make another 10 laps. So uh, for me, I never thought that the last race, a Grand National Championship, would come down to something that I always had a lot of fun doing and, and just riding and practicing on like an indoor like that. But, you know, I would say the preparation for something like that's been going on for me for 15 years. You know, we've been, like I said, we've raced concrete, we raced ice, we raced indoor dirt, outdoor dirt, small, first gear, second gear, you name it. I've done it the last 10, 15 years. And then, um, the two months basically that we had off, I had a couple friends come over and, you know, uh, dig me out a little track here about the same size as what Vegas, uh, we were all told Vegas was going to be. 
and um, made lap after lap with buddies and had a bunch of buddies come over and do like race modes and simulations of what we would do and change the track up a bit and try to get the kind of scenarios. But so a lot of pre- preparation for sure those last two months. And I know like Cool Beth and Brian and all them guys, they were doing the same thing. But uh, it was a lot of fun. I enjoy indoor ice racing. I enjoy concrete. I enjoy the the bang them up, uh, bump and run type of stuff. It was just always my cup of tea growing up. And, you know, the fist fights in the phone booth type of method, you know, I always really enjoyed that. And uh, so it was cool. I had a lot of fun. I loved that analogy. That was probably my favorite analogy from the weekend, uh, describing the event. It's like a boxing match in a phone booth and that it was. So give us your overall perception of the event. I mean, it was very small, a very small track, and everybody was kind of shocked at how small, actually. Um, They said, comparably, it was even smaller than the DeCoin Indoor. Um, So give us your overall perception of the event as a whole. What did you think? I thought the racetrack and the racing, uh, like the the, the track was shaped like a football. I thought that was the best we could ever find a short track to be. I thought the racing was pretty intense. Um, I thought it was a really good battle of a short track. I mean, there was passing left and right. You know, the next day was the Super Prestigio, and you could see all the different passing and lines. Um, I couldn't think of a better way to, for the surface. I mean, they did everything they could in their in their you know imaginable to to make it as racy as they can for us, and they did. I mean, I thought you know we were all going to go around to this uh, very slippery one line smooth little short track and it was a little rough which creates mistakes and uh places to pass it was shaped like a football so it was very pointy in the corners so there was a fast line and then there was a line to move the guy out of the way if you had to and uh you wanted to go the fast line to try to get away from the guy behind it but you couldn't give too much room because you would get moved out of the way I thought um, I thought it was all honestly awesome. I know a lot of people say the last race of the year should have been ended on like maybe a half mile, a mile. But, you know, this is the Grand National Championship, and that means being the best at all, all four disciplines. And, uh, you know, if I had it my way, I think it would be awesome to have, you know, four of each, four short tracks, TTs, half miles, miles. And that would really show who equally is the best. But, you know, honestly, we had uh, out of all the disciplines with the most was the miles. We had five miles this year. I think we had uh, four short tracks or four half miles, three short tracks and one TT. So, I mean, it definitely was favored to the guy that's stronger on the bigger bikes. And um, but you still them short tracks and TTs, they add up points as well at the end of the day. And uh, we started the series at the on a short track and we ended it even a smaller short track. And it's just the way it rolled this year. And, um, you know, I, I, like I said, I felt like I prepared myself the best way I could. And uh, at the end of the day, it, it really helped. Well, it ended in Vegas on a short track. You happen to be a short track specialist, so it was like the role was in your favor. Jared, you're number one again this year for 2015 in AMA Pro Flat Track Grand National Championship. And we wanted to get you on just to congratulate you not only on that, but for winning the inaugural Super Prestigio of the Americas and wish you luck going over to Barcelona again this year. Thanks so much for coming on the show. We hope to follow up with you again after Super Prestigio. See how you did. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. Great, thanks. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Technology, 100% American made precision parts and accessories at EvilTechnology.com. Chuck Walla Valley Raceway, 17 corners to challenge even the most experienced rider. Go race, CVR.com. SVRacingParts.com, the exclusive importer and distributor of the KO Mini GP MR125 race bike. That's SVRacingParts.com.
Thanks so much to this week's guest, Jared Mees. I'd also like to say a quick thanks to AMA Pro Flat Track, Super Prestigio, and Super Hooligans for having me at the event. It was so awesome to be up close and right in the action all weekend. It was a super good time. Thanks again to Flat Track Live for providing that great video. And if you missed the coverage of the event on FansChoice.tv, complete FansChoice coverage of the Flat Track season finale has been made available for viewing in high definition on FansChoice.tv. And for the future of motorcycle racing, it's here at Next Moto Champion. Evil Technology, 100% American-made precision parts and accessories at EvilTechnology.com. Chuck Walla Valley Raceway, 17 corners to challenge even the most experienced rider. Go race, CVR.com. Sunstar, the largest OEM supplier of sprockets and brake rotors in the world. Check them out at Sunstar-MC.com. his championship, his Super Prestigio win, and the upcoming Super Prestigio in Barcelona. But first, let's take a quick minute to thank some sponsors. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh.